Hello, one and all. I would like to welcome you guys back to another episode of Conundrum Contingencies. I'll be your host. My name is Reverend Garland Davis. Um, tally ho and cheers. Now, this will be a video response to my friend Mike Hilton of Survival's uh, channel. Now, he asked a little bit about the... Uh, the future of America in this last video, and do we as viewers think that SHTF uh, is going to happen, needs to happen, or whatever? Well, Mike, first of all, don't let them see you sweat like that. Um, I think that uh, tomorrow you need to go ahead and take that uh, fishing trip and uh, protect your phone and go out there and do a little shooting on the water or the river or wherever your fa favorite watering hole might be. Now, um, it's not really about what we want or what we like or anything like that, sir. Um, it's going to happen because it just is. I mean, um, somebody's trying to run the country into the ground. And all the negative things that are in the Bible are going to happen. I know that I'm a preacher. My opinion is biased, but just look around you. Now, here's the thing. The disciples thought that Christ was going to come back in their lifetime or shortly thereafter. Um, that didn't happen. And every time some guru or some prophet or so-called prophet says that the end times and the end of days is near, and then it doesn't happen, and then these cults pop up, and then everything goes to hell and people start losing their faith. But the Bible says, you know, don't put your faith in man. You know, look around you to discern the how, the times, and the when. Now, uh, if there is, in fact, an Illuminati, and there's a uh, a hidden hand and all that, then they're doing a pretty good job of uh, running the country in the ground. And I mean, I don't really sweat um, people coming across the border to try to make a better life for themselves. I don't even sweat them getting a 750 credit rating. I just don't think they should make it harder for me because I was here before they were. And I, of course, served my country. So that nonsense that you said about you being nobody, you're somebody. You're a veteran, like me. You're a patriot. And I admire and respect you, but you don't need to get that bent out of shape about it. I mean, if you taught your boys right from wrong, then they're going to make a choice. Now, you and I, we have wives. They don't always act like Disney princesses, but we're blessed to have wives in the first place. There are a lot of lonely guys in prison and out here on the streets that love to trade uh, places with us. So... DJ Magic Mike, I think we should count our blessings. Now, got some bad news, though. I mean, if somebody, if a Freemason or some kind of master architect or engineer sat up there in Washington, D.C., and they somehow separated Washington, D.C. from the rest of the country, and they got streets that form pentagons and hexagons and baphomets and all kinds of evil stuff like that and owls, we have a problem. If the Washington Monument and Lincoln Monument are not what we think they are, but they're obelisks and they represent the manhood of some pagan god instead of uh, homage to great presidents, we have a problem. We've got a major problem because one out of three churches have that same little steeple on top of them. So if they're not paying homage to God, by God, I mean uh, the God of Abraham and Je Jehovah. Who are they paying homage to? You know, you say you're not a Christian, but you seem to have a nice moral head on your shoulder. Somebody taught you something, and you're passing that on to your sons, and that's good. But, I mean, I don't know how bad things are going to get before they get better. I mean, I don't want to see six-year-old gangbangers that are about, as they say on the streets, and mean, you know, to shoot to kill just like a rogue cop, and I don't want to see six-year-old girls running around with a phone showing. I don't want to see that. Um, so I think all we can do is really roll with the punches and hope it works out. Now, aside from a video response to you, I wanted to talk about something that happened to my, something that happened in my backyard and something that happened a little while back. Now, a little while back is pretty short and concise. Um, there was a coasting otherwise known as a shallow water sailor, 
I'm a Navy man, so I can talk all this back about the coaches that I want. Um, and they they seem to be good people for the most part. I don't know how good they can swim, but anyway, um, Coast Guard did the Coast Guardsman did his 20 years, got into it with some woman, didn't want to pay child support, and then the boys in blue closed in on him. Now, I'm not going to sit here and be a hypocrite and say I never ran for him the cops, because I'd be lying. But, he ran from the cops, and they shot him in the back. Now, they shot an unarmed man, a black man, in the back, who was trying to run away. Um, he was dead-ass wrong, but now he doesn't have to worry about child support. I don't support what they did, but, I mean, if you can lay up there and make a baby with a woman then you need to take care of that child, whether the woman turned out to be a witch or disgruntled or evil or she slept with all your friends or, should I say, so-called friends. And that's just the way it is. I think he made a piss-poor decision, and so did the cop. And that cop should be fired, relieved, and tried for manslaughter. Um, now, the thing that happened in my backyard, um, right down the road... In Clearwater, there was an altercation. Now, I'm a thinker. That's that's one of the things that makes me a good chess player. And I try to anticipate what my neighbors are going to do, what the cops are going to do, what you know, other law enforcement might do. Even sometimes I try to anticipate what the weather might do before I go fishing. But um, this guy didn't do all that. They stop off at a convenience store. As the man of the house goes in to buy Marlboro, Newports, get gas, whatever, um, a semi goody two shoes who happens to be white, he complains because the black folks parked him to a handicapped parking space and they didn't have a sticker showing. So the do gooder and the black dude's wife went round and round until the black man came back out of the store and he saw. Somebody antagonizing his wife, so he decided to play the hero, and then he pushed the guy. Now, the guy that he pushed happened to have a CCW, that's a concealed weapons permit, and then the, the black dude took one step back, but he, he kind of stood his ground, and then the uh, white guy shot him, and then the black dude staggered into the convenience store where he later died. Now, some people will say it's a little bit Uncle Thomas, but... Technically speaking, the brother didn't have the right to put uh, his hands on Cornholio, who just had a big mouth. He probably would have been better off just having a uh, a verbal fight with the guy because he kind of crossed the line when he put his hands on the other guy. But on the other hand, the white guy's life was never in danger. He just got pushed on his ass because he had a big mouth. And now he took somebody else's life. And now they're going to go round and round and round and round and round like that. Now, I have the right to speak on this because I've used a stand-your-ground um, defense. Only when I used it, I was struck. And there were four of them. And I don't even know why they did that because there's a, you can click on the link. If you, if you go to my page on Conundrum Contingencies and click About, there's a link. When can you use your gun? And it tells the whole story in detail, but I won't go there right here. But um, they knew I was carrying, so I don't even know why they did that. And when I went to jail for a little while, they told me that if I had a CCW, I wouldn't have had to probably go to jail all, which I, I doubt. I, I don't think the law is that strong, but they knew they had a weak case seven days in. I was in jail for 33 days, and then the state took no action. But, you know, even though it was a bad New Year, I was happy and I was kind of cocky because I knew if I can't beat that case with four attackers, then, you know, nobody's going to win. But um, I think the white guy that shot the brother just for getting pushed went overboard, but I would still be a social worker, a bartender, and a computer repair technician, so it doesn't matter what I think. But I just want to tell you guys, don't be high heads like the Human Torch. Don't try to be like Logan. By Logan, I mean Wolverine. You you got to uh, you got to keep a cool head. 
I'm not saying the brother should have been meek and not saying anything. I'm not even saying that the brother shouldn't have got in his face. He should have told him something because, you know, that's your wife and, you know, you took an oath to protect her and be with her and love her and cherish her and all that. But, you know, he should have put his hands on Elliot and Elliot damn sure shouldn't have shot him. So, all you preppers out there, just to roll with the punches and um, try to be a gentleman, you know. If the boy had a Follow Patrick Swayze's advice, because I used to be a bouncer. What did Patrick Swayze say in Roadhouse? Be nice until it's time to not be nice. The black man failed to do that, so he's no longer with us. And the Coast Guardsman was a straight-up idiot, because I think if I remember right, it was a fat, out-of-shape cop. And it was like in Fargo. You guys remember, I don't know how many of you guys saw that. Fargo, there's a pregnant cop, and this guy was getting away, so she shot him in the leg. Well, the other guy wasn't quite as merciful as that and didn't get shot in the leg. This guy died, but um, it is what it is. So so anyway, Mike, don't let him see you sweat, man. Take care of yourself. Enjoy that fishing trip tomorrow, man. Um, you got to take a little bit of time for yourself, you know. Shooting these videos is not everything. And, you know, teach your boys the right way to go with how to discern and how to read people and follow their gut. And I think everything will work out. You just have to live and let live, man. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, I think Christmas trees are pagan. I like Christmas trees. I love the way the real ones smell. I won't have one in my house, but I'm not going to keep you from having one in your house. That's not what preachers are supposed to do. Preachers are supposed to tell the truth, and then you're supposed to stand aside. You're supposed to point in the Bible where it says this, do this, don't do that, and then you let them go. You know, if more preachers did that, less people would be, you know, hateful. No, I'm not the best preacher in the world. Uh, I have a drink in my hand, but I tell you this: only a real preacher can be part of a miracle. I've been quite, I've been part of a couple of those. I wish I had that kind of stuff on tape. I mean, only a real preacher can heal somebody. But it's like you know, God does not heal in the uh, the preacher's just an instrument. You know, but that's grace. You know? So if the Lord saw fit to use me after I drank a couple of cold ones, hey, kudos. Know, that's love. You know, Lord, oh, I'm not going to use this preacher. He likes his uh, old English 800. He likes his rum. So, no revelations for him. No blessings for his flock. It's not how the that's not how God works. A lot of people wish He worked that way. God lets the sun shine on uh, saints and sinners alike. So, I guess I'll close with that and my usual phrase. Bug the Bunny always used to say, strategy. But if you don't prep, it's going to end in tragedy. And whose fault will that be? Won't be mine. Tally ho!